Hey guys, it's Amelia and today's video is about your seat. It's another video that I did with Sue Martin and the last video we talked about alignment. I'll link that video below. Um, this video is more about your hips, like how you sit in the saddle, how you follow your horse. Um, and the other thing that I want you guys to think about, like even just while you're sitting watching this video, is ask yourself which seat bone has more weight on it. And comment below, I wanna know from you guys which seat bone you tend to sit heavier on, and we'll see if there are any trends. And also, you know, be aware of this, which seat bone you tend to sit heavier on, and you've gotta get those seat bones even. All right, I hope you guys enjoy this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my videos. Thanks, guys. That's the other part of sitting, is that Amelia is moving her body to match the horse's stride all the time. So if we just watch her walk on the circle, most horses, when if they have a fairly nice forward active walk, they'll roll your pelvis with them, and you can see her, them, her do that. She's exaggerating it just a little bit here so you can see it. But as he walks, he rolls her pelvis. There's a big difference between her rolling her pelvis and her driving him with her seat. For a minute, she's going to shove him with her seat. Okay, and that's counterproductive because that's going to make the horse again Think of, of what you would feel like if somebody was on your back doing it. It would make you feel like arching your back and pushing away from that. So she wants to follow in a rolling fashion with her seat, but she doesn't want to follow to the point of shoving or per, trying to produce the walk with her seat. Now, if she doesn't move enough with her seat and she stops the motion in her body, a lot of horses won't move which he's demonstrating really well. So he knows that when she stops moving her seat, that's usually part of an aid for him. Now she's going to roll again and he's going to find it. He's going to find himself able to walk again. And then if she takes him up again and goes into sitting trot, we can see that too. So in the sitting trot, her pelvis has to roll with the horse as well. It's not just allowing your, your hip to move. You have to consciously tell your seat to move with the horse. If she just relaxes, she's going to flop like crazy. So go floppy relaxed. So if she just relaxes her body, she moves with him. But look at her hands start to bounce. Her legs are bouncing around. Her thigh is bouncing around in the saddle. Now she's going to control that motion again. So now she gets quieter and her hands are independent so they can sit still. And now if she's sitting to the trot and she doesn't move through her pelvis, let's see what happens. So she's going to stop. Oh, and all of a sudden he stops moving. So when she stops the motion, the horse says, I can't move anymore because she's not moving with me anymore. And now she's going to move again and we'll see him right away relax his back and say, oh, okay, I can move again. If she goes in the canner, Okay, so now she's in the canter, and now her hip is rolling with the horse too. And if we see her, she always has the same angle to her pelvis. She has a little closure between her seat and her thigh, a little angle between her seat and her thigh. And she's sitting every stride following his back. Now, if she drives with her seat, it looks like she's shoving him with her back. And then she's going to push his forehand down on the ground and push him down in front of her, which she doesn't want to do. And she looks funny because she looks like she's working too hard and she's way, way, way too much movement in her body. Now she's going to sit quiet again, but she's now she's moving just enough to follow the horse. And now she's going to stop moving her seat and we'll see what happens. If she doesn't follow him and she quits moving her seat, her butt starts to lift and drop and flop out of the saddle. She kind of comes a little bit up and down in her body and he's all of a sudden going, wait, I'm not even sure I'm supposed to keep cantering while she does this. Now she's going to sit down again and follow him again. And there she's with the motion again. At the same time she's with the motion in her seat, she has to be with the motion in her elbows. So in the canter is the best place for us to see this. Every stride her elbow straightens a little and bends a little and follows the motion there. If she stops that too, that causes her a problem and the horse is gonna get tired and decide he wants to stop. There. So now she's gonna show that she moves through her elbow as she does. Now, if she doesn't move through her elbow, if she stops that motion, 
Now her hand is not, not, no longer independent and she's no longer going with the horse. So his head comes up, his back goes down, and he's not as happy and comfortable as he is when she's following. Now she's going to follow again, and now she's with the motion again. Good. Now when she goes back to trot, the following of the elbow is a little different. The elbow has to go a little bit up and down in the trot because the horse's back goes up and down like this. Now if she does it too much, her hands will bounce a little bit. So she ha And then we'll have this happening, which you see sometimes in the dressage arena. And that's a little bit loud and obnoxious. And if he wasn't such a good boy, he might start throwing his head around and telling her that it was really not, um, not comfortable. Sometimes Amelia has a little habit of holding her thumbs up in the air. So she has to put her thumbs down on the rein. And now she's moving with him again. And with her elbows just flexibly following the gait of the trot. Good boy. Everything in her seat has a function, and everything that she wants to do with her seat has a reason for it. So there's a, there's the, the form of the horse follows the function of the rider, and, the, and vice versa. The function of the rider follows the form of the horse.